This week on BK Web News, we learn more about the tobacco-free policy that's coming to MCLA. Then, we pick up a ball with the rugby team. And we hit all the right notes at the Allegretto Spring Concert. That's coming up next on Beacon Web News. Hello and welcome to the April 11th episode of Beacon Web News. I'm Julia Zixer. First, let's check in with Sam Neskern at the BWM Weather Center for a preview of this week's weather forecast. Sam? Well, Julia, we have another rainy, cloudy week coming up ahead of us, but I'll give you the details of that later in the full seven-day forecast. Thanks, Sam. Police are investigating a shot that was fired through a window at Public Eat and Drink last Thursday. The incident was reported at around 2.46 p.m., and though no one was seriously injured, the restaurant remained closed for the evening. Police Director Michael Casalio said that the area was being treated as a crime scene. The stray bullet did graze at least one customer, however. A woman eating lunch reportedly sustained very minor injuries and declined treatment. So far, no arrests have been made. Tomorrow night, April 12th, Mass Mocha will be airing the third installment in the documentary film series about true convictions. The film, Babylon Dreamers, is about a group of immigrants from a poor neighborhood in Israel who form a breakdancing group. Their ultimate goal is to enter an international breakdancing competition in Germany, but their path there will have many ups and downs. To see how these dancers get down, grab tickets online at massmocha.org. The show will be starting at 7 p.m. In, in celebration of Autism Awareness Month, join the Community Access to the Arts for Art for All on Thursday, April 12th from 4 to 6 p.m. in the Sullivan Lounge. Come create an original abstract or self-portrait print using foam plates. The event is free and refreshments will be provided. To register, contact J.C. Avello at bfair.org. Student, the Student Government Association candidates will be campaigning this coming week in the marketplace. Learn more about SGA and your fellow students who are running and the issues they are campaigning on from 12 to 2 p.m. on Thursday, April 12th, or from 4 to 7 p.m. on Friday, April 13th. Earlier this year, a controversial policy was approved to turn MCLA into a tobacco-free campus. The policy, which will go into effect on August 1st, 2018, will prohibit smoking of any kind on the campus. BWN's Karina Matera has more on the story. On March 28, 2018, MCLA announced that the school approved a tobacco-free policy to prohibit smoking and other tobacco use on campus. This new ban is set to go in effect August 1, 2018. In an email sent out by Katherine Holbrook to the entire school body, the purpose of this policy claims to be intended to reduce the health risk related to secondhand smoke as well as other adverse effects of smoke and other tobacco use. This policy shift has been disturbing smokers on campus who have adjusted to the current smoking policy. As far as how I feel about it, it's, it's very disrespectful to me. I feel like it's one thing to be concerned with students' health. I understand that smoking is not a good thing. It causes cancer and all that sort of stuff. But what upsets me about the school's initiative is if they were really, really looking for the student body's health, they would have done this pro bono. They would have done this just to be nice. MCLA reasons that the final push for this effective health help aid ban was a $15,000 grant received by the American Cancer Society. This then raises the question, what is the school planning to do with that money? I haven't seen a plan and a majority of people who are mentally ill smoke and a majority of LGBT people or I think it's 36% of LGBT adults are smokers, and I believe that if they had a plan for the money saying, we're going to funnel this into uh, counseling services or LGBT services or anti-smoking services, that will help. But um, I, I haven't seen a plan for the money, and that's how it affects me. 
Now, our school definitely isn't the first to go about the smoking ban. By last year, 2017, 2,000 campuses nationwide had officially become smoke-free zones. Within this count, 1,700 were completely tobacco-free. MCLA ensures that this new policy on campus doesn't require students to give up tobacco products completely, just limits them to being able to use them while on campus. After reaching out to administration multiple times for more information regarding the policy, we have yet to hear back. If you are someone who is looking to give up tobacco products, the school is actually developing a website that will help communicate and give any necessary tools to help this transition. For Beacon Web News, I'm Karina Matera. Jody Puri, a professor of psychology at Simmons College, will be visiting MCLA on Thursday, April 12th. Puri teaches in post-colonial feminist theory, sexuality, and queer studies and psychology. She will be talking about placing blame, policing race, gender, and sexuality in Southern context at 5.30 p.m. in Murdoch 218. Are you a fan of traditional West African music? There will be a special performance at Mass Mocha by Trio de Cali with their original intimate songs on their Mande culture. Opening up for the trio will be Williams College graduate and African drumming star Jason Lu Lucas. Catch the show on Saturday, April 14th at 8 p.m. Tickets can be found online at massmocha.org. Come to Sullivan Lounge on April 12th between 4 to 6 p.m. for printmaking in support of Autism Awareness Month with SESI. Support is provided by Berkshire Individual and Family Resources, Community Access to the Arts, and Association for Neurodivergent Awareness. Refreshments will be provided. The MCLA in North Adams 2018 Spring Day of Service is on Saturday, April 14th. This is a great opportunity for those who want to help out the North Adams community. Check-in begins in the Venable Gym at 9 a.m. To register, contact Chris Hampman on Office 365. In this past weekend, the Allegretto's hosted their annual spring concert. BWN's Karen Canella was there to watch them hit all the right notes. This week, the Allegretto Club had their annual spring concert. Let's go check out how the show went. MCLA's Allegretto Club had their annual spring concert. The show included gospel pieces, a cappella songs, solos, and duos. We asked MCLA students about their favorite part of the show, and students said... Um, Sarah Williams solo, she's one of my best friends, but also I think the gospel did really well. My favorite part of the show was seeing all my babies sing, especially Sarah and Eric. Uh, definitely Sarah Williams solo. My favorite part of the show was Sarah solo, because she was great. President Jennifer Soslo tells us how long the Allegretto Club prepared for the show. We've been planning this show probably since around January, um, but we've been working on the songs since the fall. Uh, we've been rehearsing three times a week, each section, um, all year basically for this concert. Soslo also shared how proud she was of club members and why she thinks the show was a success. I'm really happy with how it turned out. Um, I'm really proud of all my members. The directors worked so hard. All the members work so hard coming to rehearsal each week. Everyone's really dedicated. Ebor members awarded senior club members with gifts as the show was coming to an end. <laughs> the show ended with a vibrant solo led by club member Samantha Hyde. The show was a success and the Allegretta Club looks forward to having more shows like this in the future. For Beacon Web News, I'm Karen Canella. This Friday, the first ever MCLA student government broadcasted debate will take place. The debate will be between presidential candidates Declan Nolan and Andrew Bellardian. The debate will be posted on the Beacon's Facebook page and Beacon's YouTube page. If you have specific questions you want answered during the debate, email them to the Beacon at beacon at mcla.edu.
support your presidential candidates. A retail marijuana shop may take the place of a long vacant restaurant in Cheshire. Brothers Nathan, Benjamin, and Nicholas Gerard purchased what was once an eatery called the Country Charm in 2016. The property fits within the town's proposed marijuana bylaws, but it's still early on the process, and the brothers plan to hold a community meeting before negotiating an agreement with the town. The MCLA in North Adams' spring day of service is on Saturday, April 14th. This is a great opportunity for those who want to help out the North Adams community. Check-in begins in the Venable Gym at 9 a.m. To register, contact Chris Hammond on Office 365. For this week's club feature, BWN's Maggie Allen takes a look at the rugby team. This week, we catch up with the MCLA rugby team as they take on Williams College here in Bennington, Vermont, and we learn what it's like to play a club sport at MCLA. First year, Sam Kelly tells us how he became involved with the rugby team. Uh, my roommate got me interested in it, and I just I needed a way to get physically active, so I just decided to play rugby. So, His favorite part of the team is... There's a sense of community. We're very welcoming, so like anyone could come in and play, and like we'll accept them. Senior Pete Van Geldern explains why he got involved with the rugby team. Well, the school doesn't really offer any contact sports, and I played football and lacrosse growing up, so I thought it would be a good opportunity to try something new and uh, keep playing a contact sport. And Geldern will be graduating in May alongside some of his teammates, and this is what he will take away from his rugby experience. Time management. That's a really big thing. Uh, sometimes we have practice at 9 o'clock at night, and that can be pretty tough for uh, trying to get homework done. Many players don't have much experience with rugby. Senior Masood Karras tells us why rugby was the right fit for him. Uh, nothing with rugby but physical contact sports. I played football for four years in high school, so MCLA doesn't offer football, so I thought that rugby would be great for me because I love the physical aspect of the game. Also graduating this year, Karis looks forward to keeping connections. You know, I just met a bunch of great guys during the years, and uh, I know that I'll be keeping in touch with them, especially when I come back for alumni games. So. Senior Aaron Lopes gives insight to the things he'll miss most about playing. Definitely just playing around, getting some exercise, and also just the way uh, the game is, especially hitting people and, um, you know, just playing with some good guys. In the past few years, the team's numbers have been growing significantly. President of the club, Dylan McArdle, sums it up. It's just fun. Yeah, we're just looking for new people, and it's a lot of fun, a lot of running, a lot of tackling. It's a lot of fun. Uh, there's always open positions. There's always time to play on the field. If you ever have a problem or anything, uh, we're always there to help. The team scored eight tries and converted six of them, beating Williams College 56-0. You can follow their Facebook page for more information and updates. For BWN, I'm Maggie Allen. Yorick presents William Shakespeare's Hamlet. Admissions is free. To reserve your tickets, email mclayorick at gmail.com with your name, which, which performance you will be attending, and how many tickets you will need. Shows are April 12th and 13th at 7 p.m. And on April 14th, there will be a matinee at 2 p.m. and a regular performance at 7 p.m. On Saturday, April 14th, Mass Mocha is celebrating International Slow Art Day. The average viewer only looks at a work of art for 10 seconds, and the museum is hosting events and tours throughout the day to teach people how to appreciate art. The first event starts at 11 a.m. For more information, visit massmocha.org. Now, let's go to Sam Niskern for this week's full seven-day weather forecast. Thanks, Julia. Today we are going to see some sun, but it will be popping in and out behind a cloudy sky. And it may look warm, but you're probably going to want to wear a jacket anyways. Come Thursday, you're going to want to bring an umbrella as we will have showers throughout the afternoon and evening. On Friday, things will start to perk up a bit and finally feel like spring with a high of 60 and a low of 48. Don't get too excited though, because the rest of the week is going to be a wet one. Saturday, we will have some afternoon showers that continue into Sunday morning with a high of 63 and a low of 38. On Sunday, the temperature will drop down to 41 degrees, so that rain will intermittently turn into snow. But the rain doesn't stop there. Monday and Tuesday, it will continue to rain with highs in the 40s. They say April showers bring May flowers, right? Well, if that's the case, then come May, we are going to be walking through a rose garden. 
Here are the cumulative precipitation totals for the month of April in North Adams for the past three years. In April of 2015, we received just over two inches of precipitation from either rain or snow. In 2016, North Adams had over two and a half inches of precipitation. And in 2017, we had 2.3 inches. Now, take a look at this. Today is April 11th, one third of the way through April, and we have already received almost an inch. Depending on how much rain and snow we get over the course of the next week, we could hit that two inch mark before we are even two thirds of the way through the month. So keep those umbrellas handy. This has been your seven day forecast for Beacon Web News. I'm Samantha Niskern. Seniors, graduation is only about a month away and there's still a lot of information you need to be prepared for the big day. The graduation information meeting will be held Friday, May 11th at 10 a.m. in the Amsler Campus Gym. This year's bachelorette ceremony will be Friday, May 11th, with the student lineup starting at 2.30 p.m. in the Church Street Center. The ceremony itself will begin at 3 the next day. May 12th is commencement. Friends and family can begin seating at 9.30 a.m. in the Amsler Campus Center Gym. All guests must be seated by 10.45 a.m. and must have their tickets on them at all times. Graduating students will be, at line, will be lined up at 10 a.m. in the Venable Hall Gymnasium. The ceremony begins at 11 a.m. following a reception in the Murdoch Lawn. Students will be able to receive up to five tickets starting on April 17th. Students must reserve and print out their tickets by April 30th. Beginning at noon on May 2nd, any remaining unclaimed tickets will be available to students who need, who need more on a first-come, first-served basis. Caps and gowns will be available for purchase starting April 17th through the campus bookstore. The price for the cap, gown, and tassel package is $44. We will update you with more graduation information as the semester closes. That's it for this week. To stay up to date with BWN, you can follow us on social media. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.